Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Code at GWA. In this video, we'll be covering Module 1.1. Before we begin, if you have any queries or any directions you want this course to head in, then please let Raj and I know. Uh, if you're interested in where this course is heading, uh, then please check the description. There's a Google Doc with the outline of this course, or what the future lessons will be. So yeah, just check it if you're interested. So with that out of the way, let's get going. Module 1.1 will be covering data types, um, specifically strings, as well as the print function. So you don't need to know this so much depth, but Python is an object-oriented programming language, which means it focuses on how objects are manipulated and interacted with. Uh, this is done so this is done through things called functions. I'm sure you've heard of that before. And objects are essentially anything that has a unique attribute or any features that yeah that are unique to it, and they all fall under some type, some form of data type. Uh, so for example, you can see here that the print statement is a form of function. The parentheses, as you can see here, denote that it's a function. All functions have parentheses, as these indicate that whatever's inside them are the inputs of the function. It's like maths, whatever you input, uh, you'll get an output. So as you can see here, the input would be hello world. This is an object, and its data type would be string. I'll go into more detail with that later. And the function itself would be print. And you must keep in mind that you always have to put parentheses around um, at the end of a function. Even if, you, even if you don't have any inputs, you still need to put parentheses because it's just common procedure, uh, convention, if you will. So I'm sure most of you know what will happen if we run this code. But if you type out this function and have the input hello world, you'll obviously get hello world as your output. So self-explanatory. But let's, this, this more, it's more nuanced than that. Um, before we get into more detail, um, you might be wondering, oh, does this affect the code? Well, if you start anything with a hash in Python, then it will essentially make a comment. Now, comments don't affect the code at all, and it just allows you to, uh, I guess, understand what each feature is um, in your code. If it's quite complex, then obviously having comments is really helpful. Before I move on to task one, I want to go over print functions one more time. So as I mentioned earlier, the print function, uh, what's within these parentheses in, indicates what the input is. So in the case of the print function, hello world is its input. And whatever is inputted into a print function will be its output, um, as the name would apply. Strings can be recognized through the quotation marks that surround them. So you can see here that hello world is a string because it has quotation marks around it. But be mindful. Um, if you have, uh, you know, the the double quotation mark and a regular quotation mark like that, then it's not going to register as a string. You can see there's going to be an error message. But if you obviously go back to a double quotation mark, it's again recognized as a string. So again, to reiterate, um, something is considered a string if it has quotation marks around it, and these quotation marks have to be the same, uh, the same type. It has to be either double or single. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go into task one. Print something, I don't know, funny, whatever you want, really. But, um, you know, write a comment here t uh, telling who is reading this what the print function is printing, and then write the print function itself. Uh, you know, <laughs> go ahead and do that, and um, come back to this video when you're done. So, I'm not very creative, I'll just do hello world again. But, um, uh, one thing to note is that you can leave spaces between the parentheses and the input. As you can see here, uh, like, there can be a space in between here and it, it doesn't really matter. I, I just prefer to have spaces because for me it looks less cluttered, but um, you know, you don't have to have spaces. And it should print hello world, as you see here. Uh, also, like, if you have space here and a no space here, it doesn't matter as well. Oh, it still have the same, same output. Okay, so task two is pretty much the same as task one. But the only difference here is that we want you guys to add a code cell and have these separate. So to add a code cell, all you need to do is come up here to the toolbar and press plus code and you make a new cell. So knowing that, try doing task two. All right, hopefully you guys have done task two by now. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. This, in this case, you might notice that I'm using single quotation marks, um, not double. And I'm just again showing you that the type of quotation mark doesn't matter as long as they're consistent. That's what matters. And again. Uh, whether or not there's a space between this and this does not matter. I'm just showing you now. Yeah, 
There you go, that's the output. And this should not have an output because this is a comment. Nothing. Uh, so this task is pretty much the same. Um, you can do it if you want, but it's more of, more of an extension if you just want to touch yourself. Uh, yeah, so let's move on. As I mentioned earlier, every object has its own unique attributes and unique features. And these can pretty much be summed up through data types. A string is a form of data type, as I said before, and it's denoted by its quotation marks, as I said before. So you can have a list of things, I mean, well, not a list, but a sequence of characters on your keyboard. So they can like be exclamation marks, the that and sign, and at sign, hashtag, whatever. Even numbers can be put in a string. Um, as long as they have quotation marks around them, then they're considered to be a string. Uh, the next data type, um, I guess, main data type would be integers, and they function quite differently from strings. Um, the difference between the numbers, I mean integer numbers and string numbers is that string numbers are more like a text image. They don't have any real, I guess, mathematical weight, whereas integers do. So if you want to make a calculator or anything that revolves around mathematics, then you'd want to use integers as a data type rather than strings because the functions that, that can be used with them and the you know, the operations that can be applied to them are obviously unique to integers as a data type and not strings. And again, you don't. the only difference between integers and strings in terms of their syntax is that these do not have quotation marks around them, and they can only be numbers, obviously, whereas these always have quotation marks around them, and they can be any character. And yes, you can put minus signs in front of things to make it negative. Um, so yeah, let's move on to variables. Variables are also called containers. And if you want to, they can be named anything really. Uh, they can have numbers in them, they can have weird characters, or not weird characters, but you know, unique characters like exclamation marks, at science, hashtags, whatever, dollar science. Um, the only caveat here is that they cannot have spaces with them. So you can't have item space price, you have to have item underscore price, or item capital P price. Um, that's just how it works. Uh, I mean, if you want to get it, technical with that, it's more so because Python recognizes them to be like two separate terms, so it kind of confuses it. So to assign a, uh, a value to a variable, and by the way, a variable functions the same as, same as maths, <laughs> it, it's pretty much something that equals something. It's a something that contains a value, hence why it's called container as well. And to first give it a variable, you need to initialize it. So initializing is when you first assign a value to a variable. This value can be a string, uh, an integer, any other data type. So as you see here, I'm calling this variable current message and uh, it's a string. In other words, current message is also equal to I am string. Uh, this is called a literal, by the way. By the way, the spaces here do not matter. You can have current message equals I am a string or current message space equals space I am a string. You have to keep in mind that Python is a linear programming, programming language, which means that if you uh, initialize current message a second time after you first, um, after you've initialized it a first time, uh, so if this is on line one and this is line two, then this will override this. So this will no longer be I'm a string; it will be called new current message. And this can be used in place of literals. So with the print functions that we saw earlier, we were using literals as the input. You know. Um, the hello world is a literal, uh, but if we use if we initialize current message as hello world, then we could put print current message, and it would still have the same output because it, it was the same thing. Yeah, so let's see some examples of it. Yeah, so here uh, we we should expect uh, the message I am a string to be printed twice if we run the code. So when we do that, yeah. So here the input is a literal string. It's a literal input. Uh, and here we're initializing a variable and using that as input. Since these equal the same thing, it's going to output the same thing. Uh, and here we're reinitializing current message. We're initializing it for a second time. This message has been overridden, has been overridden by this. So now it will print, I'm a new string, smiley face, as you see here. So let's test that concept of linearity with task three. So uh, this is a pretty short task, but all you have to do is uh, print the current message variable that we assigned here, assign a new variable to it, so reinitialize it, and then print the thing again. 
Uh, hopefully you should know what's going to happen. Um, so make your predictions on what's going to happen, then make the code, and then, yeah. Okay, so hopefully you guys have successfully predicted and made your code. Um, I'll show you how I do it. You can notice here that when I was typing this, this popped up. So this is a feature in Google Colab. Uh, if you've initialized a variable previously, that it recognizes that you have, um, and it will pop up. So just to save you time, a shortcut if you will, um, but once it pops up, press tab and it will make it, it'll print it automatically for you. So let's run this. This should hopefully say I am a string, smiley face, and then hello world. Yep. So one thing that I didn't mention before was that floats are another type of data, as another form of data type. They're very similar to integers. Um, integers, as the name would imply, are integers. They don't allow for decimals, they're pretty much whole numbers. But floats do allow for decimals. That's, I mean, they have very similar functions, uh, but there are slight differences um, between them. Uh, so as you see here, as you see here, retail price is equal to 10.25. This variable would be considered to be a float since it's decimal. This is string. As you see here with the quotation marks, this is also a string. Uh, yes, here this would be um, an integer. If you did 22.0, then it would be considered a float, but this is an integer. And the concept of uh, reassigning values to variables also applies to the data types of each variable. Um, if you first initialize x to be an integer, 22, and then initialize that later to be I'm a string, and turn it, uh, which is obviously a string, uh, then it would become a string data type rather than integer data type. So let's move on to task 4 now. So I mentioned that um, data types kind of behave differently in certain functions. And that's true in some cases, but that's also not true in others. Um, the print function is one such, one such example. If you want to combine two strings with a space, you'd put a comma. If you print this, it'll have a space. Again, uh, in the print function, uh, whether or not the input is a string or an integer doesn't matter. Um, as you see here, it will still register this as a valid input, um, and it will kind of treat it as if you had a string as an input. It doesn't discriminate. So knowing this, try doing this task now. Okay, hopefully you guys have done this task. Um, I'll show you how I'll do it. Uh, when it comes to initializing variables, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it like this, or you could try doing this in the same line. And what I mean by that is grade, Regardless, it should should give you the same thing. I just prefer doing this. I prefer doing it this way because it looks neater than having two different lines with hardly anything on them. But this should give you John 12. Um, I mean, this isn't mandatory, but if you want to search yourself, then uh, let's go over the type function. So this is another function. It takes an input as well, and it can return the data type of strings, integers, and floats. So, for example, if as you see here, uh, we've initialized three variables, my string, my int, and my float. Um, they're all their respective data types. And if you do type my string, then it will output class string. It essentially tells you that the data type of this input is a string. If I just put a literal string in, it would still say class string. If I put a little integer, literal in integer in, it would still say class integer. So let's just go over, uh, I guess, um, basic mathematical operations in Python. So uh, adding numbers is, I mean, doing any operation is really easy uh, and intuitive. If variable 1 equals 1 and variable 2 equals 2, then variable 1 plus variable 2 would equal 3. Um, this answer, or this output of the operation, uh, can only be saved if you initialize a variable um, with this operation as its input. So for, for example, if I said uh, z equals x plus y, and I have previously defined x to be 1 and y to be 2, then z will be 3. But if I do z equals x plus y, and I define z, uh, if I, sorry, if I define x and y after defining z, then it will output an error since I haven't defined x and y previously. Again, this is because Python's a linear program, a uh, linear language. Uh, the same thing goes with strings. If you add two strings together, it will, will add two strings together. So 
I wear space plus a hat will combine the string to I wear a hat. Uh, note that if you don't have a space here though, it will combine like the where and a uh, into one word, so you need to have a space. It will not put a space by itself. And again, you can initialize a variable to be this. So if you have two um, different variables that are strings and you want to combine them into one variable, then you might want to do something like this. So let's see some examples of this. It will do this operation before printing it. So it won't it won't print um, 23 plus 18. It will print 41. As you see here. Again, doesn't matter since it's an integer. Um, you are combining strings, so it should print the combined string. My name is space Bob. Same concept. Um, this time, using a variable instead of a literal string, it will do that. So, uh, knowing this, try to do task five. Okay, so hopefully you guys have uh, managed to do all these. Um, one thing to note with the mathematical operations in Google App is that it will output um, the operation, or the answer of the operation. So this is obviously 12. Um, in normal circumstances, this would not output anything if you were to do it in any other environment. But in Google Cloud App, it will output 12. But just know that you should actually do it this way. And also note that putting space between the plus doesn't matter like before. This should print 12 as well. Remember, do it this way, not the other way, because some other environments won't uh, function similarly. Okay, now we add a float and an integer number. Remember, a float is just something with decimal. It should be 7.5. Remember to always add a space here, because you're using plus. But if you, were to do, if you were to use comma, like I showed you earlier, then the comma will automatically put a space. Okay, so in this task, we just need to make two different variables. And, oh wow, this should be 70. Okay, so again, same concept. Oops, my bad. Yeah, yeah, I put a comma instead of a plus. Okay, so <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but a big portion of coding has got to do with troubleshooting. Try to spot something. Uh, hopefully you noticed it. I mean, if you just looked here, you would see what the answer is. But this is correct. I mean, this is proper notation. Um, it's fine. But this is not. And it should give you an error message. This is because you're doing operation with two different data types. This is one thing that you should keep your eye out for. Um, just ensuring that the operations are always between the same data types. Uh, the only exception to that are floats and integers. Try to fix the errors found in these. Okay, so hopefully you've noticed them. Uh, there's two ways to fix it. I can either make this a string, or I can either make this this an integer. Uh, and this, again, I can either make this a string, or I can either make this an integer. We tested it before, and it worked. And because they're very similar data types, it does work. So yeah, type error is the error that we just focused on now. Uh, again, type error is when you try to do operations with two different data types. Um, but syntax error and name errors are other errors that could pop up. Syntax errors are when you don't format something the way it's supposed to be formatted. Um, and the name error is when you haven't defined an object. So here are some examples. So Try to spot what's wrong with these. As you can see here, this is an inconsistent quote. Um, here, you can see that the T is missing, so this is a name error. Uh, and this will be syntax error, by the way. Here, this is another syntax error because you've got to put the parentheses after this. And here, um, you put the parentheses in the quotes, so technically it's part of the string and it's not part of the function. So there's another syntax error. A lot of these small uh, small things that you likely make when you're typing something and you're tired or whatever. <laughs> so uh, it's usually best um, when you're writing large scripts of code try to try to break it down into parts because if you make a lot of mistakes like this, it's gonna take 10 years before your code can actually run and 
you can actually test what you're trying to are supposed to test. Um, yeah, so now that you've seen some examples, try to fix the errors in task, in task 7. Alright, hopefully you've done that. Um, I'll go over them now. So the area here is, now this is a syntax error, but yeah, you have to change this to a qu single quotation mark or you have to change this to a double. Another name error, because this is print, not print, it's not a recognized function. Yeah, obvious, another syntax error because there's no parentheses. Standard procedure, always have parentheses. The name error is pretty obvious here. Yep. And here, this is a type error because you're doing an operation on two different data types. And there you go. So, uh, thank you everyone for <laughs> sticking through this uh, video. Um, like I said before, and at the start of the video, if you have any uh, anything that you want to investigate later on, or anything that you want that you're curious about, then please let us know, and we'll try to incorporate something in in future lessons. But for now, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next episode on <laughs> next video.